In this video, we'll talk about entropy. According to second law of thermodynamics, if a process increases the entropy universe, it will be spontaneous. And so by understanding entropy, we can understand what will occur and what won't occur. Very cool, very important. By watching this video, you should be able to describe how entropy is not a measure of disorder, common misconception. You should be able to describe how the following equation is the best way of describing entropy. And so S equals K natural log W, where W is the number of configurations. Entropy is actually just a measure of number of configurations. It is not disorder. You should be able to describe how entropy is a function of composition, strength of intermolecular forces, phase, and temperature. You should build a series of compounds in order of increasing entropy without doing any calculations by understanding how composition, intermolecular forces, phase, etc., affects entropy. And so we have three laws of thermodynamics. The first law, conservation of energy. Second law, every spontaneous change increases the entropy universe. Third law, the entropy of a perfect crystalline substance is zero at zero Kelvin. Um, again, entropy is not disorder. Entropy is just a measure of number of configurations. Again, S equals K natural log W. And so if the entropy universe is going to increase, that means the process is spontaneous. Now, it doesn't mean instantaneous. It means will occur without any outside intervention. If a process would decrease the entropy universe, then it's non-spontaneous. It means it will not occur without any outside intervention, but you could force it to occur by increasing the entropy universe in a different process. If delta S equals zero for the universe, then it's referred to as reversible. The concept is so important, it's developed by Boltzmann, it's actually on Boltzmann's tomb, S equals K log W. When this was carved, log actually meant base, um, meant natural log, now LOG means base 10 log. And so entropy is related to the number of possible configurations a system can have. W is the number of configurations. K is Boltzmann's constant, 1.38 times 10 to minus 23rd joules per Kelvin. You should notice that the gas constant is Boltzmann's constant times Avogadro's number. So R is actually equal to K times Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And so those, those constants are fairly fundamental. Now, when we say configurations for W, we could be talking about positions of atoms or molecules. We could talk about relative orientations of molecules. We could be talking about ways of filling energy levels. And so again, configurations, for the same temperature, could be positions, orientations, or actually ways of filling energy levels. And so a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin has only one possible range of the atoms and one possible way of filling the energy levels. So again, perfect crystal means one way of filling the atoms. The atoms are all in the, the right position. Zero Kelvin means there's one way of filling the energy level. And so we have number of configurations of equal to one, natural log of one is equal to zero. And so the third law of thermodynamics is just from that perfect crystal zero Kelvin has an entropy of zero. And again, you get that from the equation S equals K natural log W. Now, if we think about four carbon monoxide molecules at zero Kelvin, again, zero Kelvin, so we don't have to worry about the configurations due to filling the energy levels. There's actually 16 possible configurations. And so the carbon monoxide molecules go be facing the same way, the opposite way. Now again, the box, you notice how the box is constructed. And so it actually limits the number of configurations. But with this constraint, we can actually get 16 configurations. And so four carbon monoxide molecules at zero Kelvin would have an entropy of 3.83 times 10 to the minus 23rd. Again, configurations could be position, orientation, or ways of filling energy levels. If we look at a little bit more uh, Interesting example, here we have chlorine in the center bound to three oxygens and a fluorine, and so it's a tetrahedral arrangement. And so the fluorine could be in any of those four positions, and so each molecule has four possible configurations. Now, if we're asked about, okay, what is the entropy of one mole of SClO3 molecules, or, or sorry, N number of molecules, well now, the number of configurations is four to the power of n. So each molecule has four configurations. And so if you had two molecules, it'd be four times four. If you had three molecules, four times four times four. And so if you have n molecules, that's four to the n. Now the natural log for the n, the n actually can come out in front. And so that gives you S equals K n times natural log of four. 
And so if we're looking at a mole of molecules, that gives you K times Avogadro's number times central log of four, and so that gives you 11.5. And so entropy can actually be calculated you can determine it in absolute terms. And so if you remember from enthalpy, we cannot determine it in absolute terms. Entropy, we can determine in absolute terms. When we're talking about um, filling energy levels, and so on the left, we have two different systems. The far left, we only have three accessible energy levels. The, the one on the right, we have one, two, three, four, five accessible energy levels. So the more accessible, the more states that are accessible, the more ways of packing those states, the more possible configurations, the higher the entropy. And so again, entropy can be due to position, or sorry, configurations be due to positions, orientations, or n ways of filling energy levels. At zero Kelvin, there's only one way of distributing the into the energy levels. And so often when we talk about zero Kelvin for entropy, it's because we don't want to have to be concerned about the configurations from the energy levels because that's usually a little bit more complicated. And so between the two energy levels on the left, the one on the right has more states, more possible configurations, and hence a higher entropy. And so possible configurations can be positions, orientations, or ways of filling energy levels. And we can actually relate this to composition of the molecules and molecular forces, physical state, and temperature. And so more atoms per molecule, you can we'll actually see there's actually more energy levels, hence more ways of filling those energy levels. So more atoms per molecule lead to higher entropy. In terms of intermolecular forces, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the fewer the configurations in terms of positions, orientations, and the lower the entropy. For physical state, gases always have higher entropy than liquids, which always have higher entropy than solids. For temperature, the higher the entropy, the higher the temperature, the more ways of filling the energy levels, the more energy levels are accessible, and hence higher entropy. And so and again, in terms of compos composition, the more atoms per molecule, typically the higher the entropy. And so if we look at methane, and then we go ethene, ethane, etc., and we see as we add atoms to the molecules, our entropy increases. And again, more atoms per molecule tends to have more energy states, more ways of filling those energy states, more configurations for those energy states, and hence higher entropy. In general, the more complex a molecule, the greater its entropy. We can see this trend by comparing three alkane molecules. The amount of motion for each molecule translates into entropy. The more motion overall, the greater the entropy. But again, I think it's more important to think about in terms of more energy levels, more ways of packing those energy levels, more configurations, higher entropy. Entropy depends on intermolecular forces. The stronger intermolecular forces, the lower the entropy, everything else being comparable. And so the strong intermolecular forces, you imagine that the smaller configuration in terms of position or an orientation. And so we can actually look at some ionic solids. And so the entropy for magnesium oxide is 26.9. For sodium fluoride, it's 51.5. Magnesium oxide is composed of plus two and minus two ions. It has a much stronger ion-ion interaction than the sodium fluoride, which is composed of plus one minus ions. And so strong intermolecular forces, lower entropy, less number of configurations. The entropy of a solid depends on the strength of the forces holding it together. The weaker the attractive forces, the greater the motion of the ions in the crystal lattice, and the greater the entropy. That's kind of cool. Um, if you remember, lattice enthalpy is actually a measure of the strength of ion-ion interaction. Lattice enthalpy is the energy required to go from the ionic solid to the gaseous ions. And so on the graph, we have entropy plotted versus lattice enthalpy. And so the stronger the ion-ion interaction, the larger the lattice enthalpy. And so what we notice is that the stronger the ion-ion interaction, the larger the lattice enthalpy, the lower the entropy, the weaker, the, the smaller the lattice enthalpy, the weaker the ion-ion interaction, the higher the entropy. So in general, the strong intermolecular forces, the lower the entropy because the, low, the fewer configurations there are. And again, you should remember for ionic solids, the larger the charges, the stronger inter electrostatic interaction, um, the smaller ions, the closer ions, the stronger electrostatic interaction, 
the charges are the most important consideration, and then the size. The stronger electrostatic interaction between the ions, the larger last enthalpy, the smaller the entropy, and the higher the melting point. Entropy also depends on phase, and so for a compound, the gas always has higher entropy than the liquid, which always has a higher entropy than the solid. Molecular motions are much more random in the gas state than in either the liquid or solid states. Motion in a liquid is more random than that of a solid. Gases tend to have the highest entropies, while solids have the lowest. And so we see for water vapor, it's got entropy of 188.8. For liquid water, it's 70. And so for a compound, gas always has higher entropy than the corresponding liquid, and liquid always has higher entropy than the corresponding solid. Now notice that sometimes you'll see a liquid which will have a higher entropy than a different gas, but if you're looking for the same compound, the gas will always have higher entropy than the liquid, which will always have a higher entropy than the solid. Now it's kind of cool, we can actually plot entropy versus temperature. If you look, looked at the enthalpy video, and remember, we could also plot enthalpy versus temperature, and the two actually look fairly similar. You know, for enthalpy, the enthalpy of a gas is always higher than the enthalpy of the corresponding liquid, which is always higher than the enthalpy of the corresponding solid. We also see the same thing here. The entropy of the gas is always higher than the entropy of the corresponding liquid, which is always higher than the entropy of the corresponding solid. And so when you're going through phase transitions, you're always going to higher entropy. Also, as you increase the temperature, you're going to higher entropy, just like when you increase the temperature, you go to higher entropy. Enthalpy. So the trends in terms of temperature dependence of entropy and enthalpy look very similar. And so should entropy increase or decrease with increase in temperature? We've talked about it. The higher the temperature, the more states accessible, the higher the entropy. And so entropy always increases with increase in temperature. You can look at the distribution of speeds for gas particles that function at different temperatures. And so T3 is the highest temperature, and T2, and then T1 is the lowest temperature. And you notice that as you increase the temperature, you're going to a higher average speed. You're also going to a broader distribution, more possible configurations, higher entropy. Heptane at 1500 Kelvin has significantly greater molecular motion than it does at 200 Kelvin. The substance has greater entropy at 1500 Kelvin than at 200 Kelvin. But again, the entropy is not due to the greater speed or the greater motion. It's actually due to the greater distribution. And so if you notice in the movie, the distribution, the range of the energy is actually much bigger. If we looked at the energy states, we'd see that more energy states were available at the higher temperature, which leads to more configurations, which leads to higher entropy. And so entropy is equal to K natural log W, where W is the number of configurations. It depends on composition, and molecular forces, for real state, and temperature. We can relate all that to the number of possible configurations.